ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another round. We're going to jump right into it. I got a lot to do today and get you through. And this is Mr. Doolin. Thank you for tuning in. Um, today we're going to take a look at intermolecular forces, uh, often referred to as IMFs. Uh, before we get started, and I know I've got some stuff written on the page already, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize for that, but we have so much to do. I didn't have time to write this while we're going along. I suggest you actually pause the video and write it down. All right. Okay, so you got all of it written down. Now let's talk about it. Is we've got intra and inter. There's a difference there. And so we're going to talk today about intermolecular forces. I need to make sure that you understand inter means between molecules, right? Intra is within. And so if we take a look here, our intra particle attractions, these are the types of bonding within a substance. So that's your ionic bonds, your metallic bonds your covalent bonds. That's the stuff that we've been going over. We have bonding characteristics, so on, so forth, and yada, yada, yada. All right. So what we're going to do today is we're actually going to focus on this intermolecular forces or these IMFs. And these are the types of forces that exist between neighboring molecules, right? And so understanding the major types of IMFs in any particular type of Bonding is very important with our ionic compounds. Remember lattice energy, that lattice energy of our crystalline structures. That is the major type of intermolecular force. All right. Metallic bonding. We don't really have any kind of intermolecular forces. All right. Because the, bo the molecules aren't bonded to each other in any way, shape or form. It's not like, I mean, it's just that general attraction of a positive cation to a sea of electrons. All right. So we don't really refer to them as having intermolecular forces because there's not distinct molecules in there or formula units. All right. Okay. And then the big one that we're going to spend most of our time today, because we've already talked about lattice energy, we're going to spend most of our time today talking about covalent bonds and the types of intermolecular forces that exist in, in covalent compounds. And these are dipole-dipole uh, IMFs and our London dispersion forces IMF. There is a term that I'm going to use to describe all of these, right? And all of those are called van der... Walls forces. So both dipole dipole and London dispersion forces can be summarized and say kind of like the group, the umbrella, if you will, over both of them is van der Waals. And then dipole dipole and London dispersions have their own distinct differences. And we will talk about that here in just a second. Okay, so I went ahead and erased everything. Now let's talk about dipole dipole. All right, so dipole dipole, the, the term dipole in and of itself means polar. All right, so dipole means polar. So you should understand that I've got a polar molecule interacting with another polar molecule. And we're going to talk about the force that exists between those two polar molecules. <coughs> Sorry. The actual definition is we're referring to the force of attraction between two molecules that are polar. If you wanted to define it, all right. And so I'm going to go ahead and draw two different electron clouds here. And I know I'm just kind of being you know, just a rough sketch. I'm not an artist by any stretch of any imagination. But with this, we have our partial positive and our partial negative, partial positive and our partial negative, right? We have a polar molecule. The circles there represent the electron clouds, all right? So I see the polarity. I see the, the density shifted towards one side of the molecule, so I understand that it's polar. Now, please understand, we know that positive and negative are attracted to each other and so you have to understand there is a general attraction right between these two we would call this an electro static attraction it is an attraction between my positive and my net actually I'm gonna say my partial positive and my partial negative so it's an electrostatic attraction i understand that it's going to exist so again we talk about this we've already kind of gone over this with our covalent compounds when polarity exists the molecules will actually orient themselves in such a way where they will line up and maximize this attraction because it represents a low energy state for the molecules and for the whole substance itself all right and so dipole di dipole is not actually a stretch of any kind of imagination we've already pretty much talked and defined dipoles all right we just have to now relate the term dipole to polar right and i've got a polar polar substance is another way of saying it okay 
All right, and so now what we want to do is we want to take a look at a specific type of dipole, right? And I'm just going to erase everything. A specific type of dipole is called hydrogen bonding. Now, I'm going to call it, call it hydrogen bonding because that's the technical term for it. I actually don't like the term bonding here, and I'm going to cross it out, and I'm going to call it hydrogen bridging. And I know you're getting mad at me, and you're like, well, why did you even write it? Well, you can hear it as hydrogen bonding. It will be referred to as hydrogen bonding, but it's not actually a bond, right? A bond is an intraparticle force. This is an intermolecular force, and so I don't like the word bond being associated with it, right? And so hydrogen bonding occurs between a hydrogen and either nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine on a neighboring molecule. And this is what I mean by this, right? We understand that these three, the reason it happens is these three are highly electronegative. They are highly electronegative. They have a high attraction for electrons. And so the most common place where we see this is actually in water. And I'm going to go ahead and draw the structure of water. I'm not going to use TBO because I'm kind of in a hurry here. But I will draw a second water molecule down over here. And I have to understand, remember, those lone pairs give this water molecule polarity because I give one side of it a molecular, um, or I'm sorry, an electronic density, if you will. And so I've got a partial negative side and a partial positive side of water. Partial negative and a partial positive side of water. Now, most of the times you'll see water drawn as Mickey Mouse right and the big part represents the partial negative of the oxygen and these are partially positive so if i see mickey mouse i'm going to call it water all right okay and so what happens here is we understand the electrostatic traction here we actually have a hydrogen bond between this hydrogen and my oxygen's lone pair there that that right there that is your hydrogen bond or remember we don't like calling it bond we we're going to call it our hydrogen bridge right it's either your hydrogen bond or your hydrogen bridge i'm going to refer to it as a hydrogen bridge because here's what i want to point out this right here that line that sigma bond this is a bond a hydrogen bonded to oxygen so you can see this is a huge vocabulary alert ladies and gentlemen it's easy to get confused here I would refer to that intermolecular between molecules as a hydrogen bridge, right? It's an intermolecular force. And out of the dipoles, generally speaking, your hydrogen bonding is your strongest dipole, dipole intermolecular force. So hydrogen bonding is the strongest dipole, dipole intermolecular force with, with some exceptions, but for the most part. All right, and so now we're going to move on to London dispersion forces. Uh, London dispersion forces are the opposite of dipole-dipole. If dipole is an interaction between polar mo molecules, London dispersions, if you could take a guess, is the attraction that exists between two nonpolar molecules. Now, some of y'all are scratching your head, and you go, wait a minute, Mr. Doolin, you, uh, you've been talking about polarity this whole time. You never mentioned nonpolar can be attracted. Well, they are, right? And so we need to understand, I'm going to make a statement here, the first one that you may not understand, but the London dispersion forces is a function of the number of electrons in a molecule. So you want to get that down. It is a function of the number of electrons in a molecule. And so I'm going to say the greater the number of electrons means greater London dispersion forces, right? And essentially what this means is because I've got a lot more electrons, I have a larger electron cloud, and it could be more polarizable. And I'll show you what that polarizable means here in just a second, all right? And so I think you need to understand as well that this is the only the only IMF for nonpolar molecules. This is the only IMF for nonpolar molecules, and it can actually be pretty strong. If you have a really, really large molecule with a lot of electrons, you can actually have a very, very 
uh, strong, if you will, intermolecular force from the London dispersion forces. All right, and believe it or not, fats are nonpolar. We know they don't dissolve in water. They're not miscible. And so what we do, we, we have to understand they just have a lot of electrons. They're very polarizable. And so that's why actually your fats exist at solids at room temperature. All right, and so to give you kind of a diagram, I want you to think about this. I've got two nonpolar molecules, right, nonpolar and nonpolar, when they get into contact with each other or close proximity here, what happens is I've got those valence electrons, if you're thinking of this as kind of a baby Bohr's model, I've got those electrons surrounding my atom, and as the atoms come closer and closer to each other, those electrons kind of like, yeah, they want to step away, they want to get away from each other. So what happens when I get two nonpolar molecules that actually come in close proximity is you will actually end up with one side of the electrons being pushed to, or I'm sorry, the electrons being pushed to one side or the other of an atom, right? And this is known as a temporary, a temporarily induced dipole moment. Right? And it's, it's, it's important that you understand that this is temporary. After this molecule leaves, the electrons will return back to their normal state and it will still be a nonpolar molecule. But in this particular state, this is when I get those London dispersion forces actually causing an intermolecular force. It's during these temporary induced dipole moments that I actually have my London dispersion forces. All right, but generally what we say is because we get these molecules packed in and they're always running into each other, there's molecular motion there that we just say London dispersion forces happen with nonpolar molecules. All right, but it's important that you understand visually what that looks like. All right, and it's because of the electron electron repulsion of two atoms or two molecules coming in close proximity, the electrons kind of push away from each other to one side or the other from from the molecule or in the molecule okay all right that was a lot ladies and gentlemen there was a lot of vocabulary in there please make sure you got it ldf imf right dipole dipole hydrogen bonding or hydrogen bridging right those are the things we need to take away and be able to to talk about and discuss in class all right if you got any questions i'll see you in tutorials and otherwise i'll see you in class